Watch this video to find out how to create a translating robot in Scratch like this. Hello and welcome, my name is Mystic here from School Tech HQ and today we're going to be looking at Scratch. In particular, how to make a robot translate your words into any language you choose. This is a perfect project for any beginner with Scratch. You can do it as a child or if you're new to using Scratch as an adult, as an educator or as a parent, it's really easy to follow. So let's begin. Okay, so we are going to start with a blank Scratch template here. We've got our cat sprite. The first thing we need to do if we're going to make a robot is we need to get rid of this sprite. So we're going to just close that and we go to this cat symbol and you can see that we have the option to choose a new sprite. So we're going to go to the magnifying glass and click choose sprite. Then we go to search. I'm going to type in robots. This is a robots translator. I'm going to choose the retro robot. You can choose a different one if you want. Now, if I don't want this robot, I can change it. I can go to costumes over here and I can choose which robot I want. I'm going to go for the retro robot B. I can go back to codes because I'm happy with my costume. And now I've got the robot that I'd like to use. So first thing we're going to do is when we click on a robot, it's going to then ask us a question. And for that to happen, we need to go to events. So if we go down to this kind of yellowy orangey one, kind of a light orange. We don't want when green flag clicked. We're going to go down to this third one here, which is when this sprite clicked. We're going to drag that over into our sandbox here, where we're going to create our code. We then need to make it ask a question. So we go down to sensing. That's this light blue one. And we're going to click on this one right here. It is one, two, three, four, five down. Ask what's your name and wait. But we don't want it to ask what's your name, so we're going to have to change that. So I'm going to change it to what would you like me to translate and wait now we can check our code right now if i click on it so if i click on it you can see that it asks me the question what would you like to translate and then down here i can type in what i want it to translate now if i said hello and press enter you see nothing happens so we need to make the rest of our program so to do that we're going to go add a wait we go to control and we're going to add a wait one second after that wait one second we're going to add a think because we want it to look like it's actually thinking about it before it just does it we're going to add our think in here It'll keep it with mm, that's fine then we're going to add another wait so we'll go back to control add another wait and for this to work, we need to add one more thing. If we go to, I've already done it here, you can see. But if we go to this purple box, we need to then select, this is an extension, we need to select the translate one. And then gives us these options here. We need that, they'll be important soon. In fact, at the moment, I'm going to drag this translate hello over and leave it here for now. So, if I click on it, it goes, what would you like me to translate? I say the word hello, press done, and it will then wait, go hmm, think for one second, and then that's it, nothing else happens. So we need to get an answer. So what we do is we go to looks, this is the light purple one, under motion, and then what we do is we go to say again, we add in a say hello. So we've now got six commands here, not a lot. But instead of saying hello, we need to change it to translate. So we're going to add this translate in here. And at the moment, it's just going to translate hello to Polish. So if I click, I say I want to translate the sentence, how are you from English to Polish? Do this thing, wait, and then it will give me an answer. Ah, but that's only one word. And that is hello. So we need to change it to the answer of our question. And how to do that is we go to sensing. Then we, right underneath the ask what your name, and wait, we have this answer block here. We're going to take this answer block, and we're going to drag it over and add it into the hello. So we've got kind of three commands all grouped together into this one line, this one block. 
So what we do now is if I click on it, I say, what would you like me to translate? How are you? It'll take a second or two to question, and there we go. I don't know how to pronounce that, so I'm not going to try, but yes, there you go. You can change the language as well. So this drop down menu for Polish, we could do German. So I do, um, hello friend, translate that. And there we go, hello friend. There you have it. So there you go, you got your translating robot. So we want to make our translating robot scene look a bit better. And here's some bonus tips that we can do. So we go to backdrops. You can choose a backdrop. You've got all these options. You can look at whatever you want. I'm going to just choose a pattern. I'll go for stripes. Maybe that's a bit better. This is not so white. But then what you can also do is create some other commands. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some cogs here turning around. So if I want to add some gears here, what I might have to do is because in Sprite, in the bank, in the light, in the library that they have, there is no gears or cogs. So what we can do is I can actually upload a picture. So if I go to the Sprite, to Sprite, and I go up to upload Sprite, I've then got a picture that I've already downloaded and I can add it in here. There we go. This is a bit big, so I can reduce the size of that. Get size. I'm going to reduce this to say forty percent. There we go. That's about that. I might go even less. Let's make it twenty. There we go. So what's going to happen is I want it to turn this cog, and how to do that is when the robot is in the thinking stage, this cog is going to turn. So it's almost showing that the robot is thinking. And to do that, what we have to do is we have to include a message. Now to do that, we go to events and we go down to this one here called broadcast message one so i add that in under the think so add that in under the think and then what i can do after that is here's my command for turning so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the gear and i'm going to say when i receive message one so we're sending broadcasting message one and this gear is going to receive it. So the robot is going to send message one. The gear is going to receive message one. And when it receives message one, what it's, what it's going to do is I'm going to use a repeat. So add that in as this. I'm going to change this to 180. And then I'm going to have it, if I go to motion, that's the blue one, turn. So eight degrees, I'm going to change it to two degrees. Now, if you know your maths, two times 180 means it's going to go 360 degrees. So it'll go, if this bit is the top, it'll go all the way around to the bottom there. So to test that out, what we can do is if I can click on here, I'm going to say, how are you again? Let's do it. Now let's keep it German for now. What's going to happen is as it thinks, you see that it's rotating. But it's giving the answer while it's still rotating. So the way to make sure that stops rotating before and then it gives the answer is we need to add a little repeat in here. So we add a repeat under broadcast still before the weight. So we don't want the weight inside. See that does it automatically. We've got the weight underneath. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have the same thing. We're going to have it do 180 times. But this time the motion. Because I don't want my robot to turn, like it just did there. And if it does that, I can just turn it back to lines decrease. I'm going to have it turn at zero degrees. So that means that for 180 times, it's going to just turn it nothing. So what would happen is if we do it now, I will mystic here. As it's thinking, this cog is going to turn. And there you go, so it stops, gives another second, and then there you go, there's the answer. Now you can do this again, you could repeat this. So if I right click on the sprite, I can then duplicate it. I could then duplicate it again, so I've got maybe three of them. I could change the sizes of them. So I have a little bit there going together. Now this one though, these two I'm going to want to have go a different direction. So it looks like they're working together. And for that, 
means that instead of going two degrees, they're going to have to go to negative two degrees. And for this one, negative two degrees. So now what happens is when we go to our robot, we say, I will mystic here. As it's thinking, you see they all start turning. Really simple way just to add a little bit extra into your coding. So there you have it. You've got the sprite asks you a question. It's then going to wait a second. It's going to think and while it's thinking. This is optional, obviously, this bit. And um, you can add a broadcast. So it's going to send a message to these three gears. They're going to rotate 180 times to two degrees. While this robot rotates 180 times at zero degrees. You can wait one more second and then it's going to give you the answer. And there you go, you've now created your own translating robot. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed creating this translating robot. Remember if you're stuck at all, you can always pause the video and rewind it to make sure you go at a speed that's right for you. And as always in the comments, what language did you choose your robot to translate words into? Again, thanks for watching and enjoy learning from SchoolTech HQ. Bye.